Hello everyone, I'm Vero, welcome back to my channel, it's been a while, <laughs> today I'm here because I've received a very special parcel from Etcher, they were kind enough to send me a couple things and I'm very very grateful for it. I thought they were just going to send me a sketchbook but they actually also sent a set of palettes and watercolors, so in this video I'm going to try them and share my honest thoughts with you guys. I've known Etcher for a while because they're rather famous for their sketchbooks. They also make other things, of course, but their sketchbooks are especially praised in our community. So I was very curious to try them for myself. I was intending to buy one after finishing my huge collection of sketchbooks that I bought on a whim in 2019 because I overestimated the amount of art I could ever make in my life. Like it's 2022 and I only used two of them. Yeah, I was being very optimistic. Anyway, let's just talk about this one. I think this is a part of their basic line of sketchbooks. The size of this one is A5. It has 26 sheets of 220 GSM, 100% cotton paper and it's hot press. Okay, that was a mouthful. <laughs> Basically, it's a sketchbook with um, thick and smooth paper. That, that's more the simplistic version of it. For what I'm seeing on the website, the thing about this sketchbook is that you can choose between a lot of different characteristics that you like. For example, you can choose between landscape and portrait format, between hot press and cold press paper, and there are different sizes too. It's quite rare to find a sketchbook with hot press cotton paper, it's actually rare altogether to find a sketchbook with cotton paper in general. Usually watercolor sketchbook on the market have cheap cellulose paper around 200 gsm thick. Their price is usually around 15 to 20 dollars. The price of this one is around 30 dollars, which is a lot for a sketchbook, but it makes sense to me because cotton paper is usually very expensive, so it makes sense that a cotton paper sketchbook is expensive. I always say that the perfect sketchbook is the one you make yourself, so it suits your needs, and since you make it yourself, it's also cheaper at the end. But some people can be bothered to make a sketchbook, or maybe sometimes you don't have time to make one. So it's important to find good ones on the market, and it's also difficult. Now, I have to say that my opinion is not fully formed yet, because I only just started using this sketchbook, but so far I'm very impressed. The paper is very nice, I must say, it's very resistant, the front and the back are very similar, which is great if you want to use both sides. At first I felt the paper and it felt very smooth, so I thought maybe there is too much sizing, but no, the paint flows well, layers well, but also lifts very well. It seems too good to be true, right? But wait, the paper doesn't even warp that much and it's only 220 GSM. Like it's not even 300 GSM. And 300 GSM paper warps and this warps very little. I am very impressed. Plus, pencil marks erase well too, and even if you erase a lot, the paper doesn't get damaged that much and the paint works just as fine on it. I've really tested this point on the portrait that I paint later in this video. Not on purpose, I just made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> and I mean, in a sketchbook the paper must be resistant, because it's normal to erase and redraw things a lot. They should not be treated too preciously, even if they are expensive, it's, it's still a sketchbook where you experiment and draw sketches and erase sketches. I'm actually starting to think that their perfect sketchbook might actually be perfect because this one is close enough. Close enough. But I only used a couple of pages, so I don't know yet. <laughs> you know, sometimes the paper quality in sketchbooks is not consistent. For example, sometimes the sizing is not even, so some pages are good, some pages are really bad. So. I, I have to finish to know if this is really good or not, so say same touch to see if it's good, I don't know, only time will tell. <laughs> now to the Perlesse and Watercolor set. This one is very colorful, really beautiful, but I also have a gold set with all shades of gold and bronze. It looks very good. Also, I love the way the set is packed, it's adorable. It looks very fancy, it reminds me of Paul Rubens, they also pack the products like this and like it feels very nice, like a treat. Yeah. 
Usually, these kinds of watercolors are used to add a special touch to paintings. At least that's how I use them most of the time. You can paint directly with them if you like. When diluted more, the shiny particles go all over the place, so the shininess is more subtle. And that's also a really cool effect. To achieve the brightest shine, I would recommend wetting the paint a lot and waiting for the water to be absorbed so that you get a rich, thicker consistency. These colors are very pretty and pigmented as well. They are pearly and metallic, but they're not glittery. They don't have bigger particles, they're quite homogeneous. It's quite difficult for me to show how shiny they are on camera, in real life they sparkle more. There is not much information about the pigments and such things, only the light fast rating is available on the swatch sheets and by what it says, they seem to be quite resistant to light. The other information that is very available is that the sketchbook and also these paints are vegan friendly. And it's difficult to find an art supply brand that is clear about that. Usually to try to find out something is vegan or not, you usually have to contact the customer service and usually they reply, but you still have to contact them to know. In this case, they tell you loud and clear. I sketched these in the evening while watching Korean dramas and when it came to the portrait, maybe because I was distracted by the dramas, I made a lot of mistakes and I erased so many times because I just couldn't get it right. But as you will see, the paint worked very well on it. I also used colored pencils and first off, I loved how smoothly they laid on this paper, but I also loved that the paper didn't get damaged at all. Even though I erased a lot and made a lot of layers, I was expecting that the color of pencil were gonna be, you know, laying on pretty weirdly, uh, but no, they just worked very well and I'm very impressed. I love this paper and I love hot press paper. Usually I don't use it as much because it's more difficult to find and also it is more difficult to use because cold press paper has a texture that hides mistakes and is more forgiving. Instead, hot press paper is, uh, you know, very flat and you can see the paint better and also the mistakes. I say it's hard to find, like it's really not hard to find if you have an art supply store near to you, but uh, I don't and I buy whatever I can find online, so usually online it's more hard to find. So far, I had a very pleasant experience using the supplies. The sketchbook so far has become one of my favorite sketchbooks ever, which is very nice. Paints were very nice, pigmented, vibrant, shiny, and I will certainly use them more in the future. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments below and I'll try to reply to everyone. If you ever had experience with etcher supplies, please share your experience with us in the comments and so that can be useful for everybody. I'll leave you to the rest of the video. Thank you so much for watching and bye bye!